This is not what many of you guys mistake this path for. This is not about music libraries. This is not about sync or licensing. This is not about film or television or making music for video games. Before I tell you what the path is, I wanna reassure you that this is the path that I personally have been walking on for the past 20 years. This is a way that we actually walk. We don't just talk about it, we actually walk this path. Because folks, life is too short to listen to those who are talking about or preaching something they don't practice. Now, who am I? Let me introduce myself. My name is Tommy Z, and I'm a founder of an award-winning music production company, Tommy Z & Co. Very original, right? Now, who am I to talk about this? I am someone who has produced close to a thousand pieces of music in my industry on three different continents. And who have I produced this music for? Some of the finest brands in the world. Brands like Google, Nike, Adidas, Honda, Toyota, Visa, Mitsubishi, Canadian Olympic team, Japanese national football team, Dutch national opera, and many, 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 many more. Now, why am I telling you this? I want you to be confident that the time you're about to spend with me is time well spent. Folks, there are so many musicians online trying to get your attention and trying to teach you how to make money when the way they're making money is not even the way that they're teaching you. Life is too short to spend with people who aren't actually doing what they preach. You'll be happy to know that your guide is in this game. If you are serious about your music career and you want to get ahead, do what? Follow those who are ahead. Do your research, check the credentials, check the reputation. Don't believe in fancy words. Don't believe in pretty videos. Check, who is this person? Do I trust them? Do I believe them? If you wanna get on some path, who would you follow but those ahead on that path? Now, I wish there was someone like me mentoring Tommy Z 20 years ago. Instead, I spent way too many years floundering, getting lost, approaching the industry in the wrong way, sabotaging myself all over the place. Luckily, I had a friend in the industry who bailed me out, who showed me the ropes, and 20 years later, here I am showing the ropes to other musicians just like you, sitting in their home studio wondering, how am I gonna make money as a musician? So folks, here's our playlist for today. First, like a pro, we're gonna face the problem. We're gonna open our eyes to new possibilities, even at a time when it seems impossible to make a living with music. Number three, we're gonna look at the path ahead, the path that I've been on, the hidden path that most of you don't know about. Number four, I'm gonna talk about the money. I'm gonna tell you exactly how musicians in our business get paid, the exact dollar amount, we will do what's called the math of the past so we can visualize what kind of money you can expect to make without ever leaving your home studio. Next, I'm gonna tell you about some success stories of musicians who started over here. They had no idea what my path is all about. They were like, well, all I know is selling records and touring, but I can't sell records anymore, and my tours got canceled, or I'm tired of lugging my amps around. What do I do? And then they joined our academy, we mentored them on the path, seven step process, boom, 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 they get their first paying project. Some of them went on to quit their day jobs to make this their full-time career. And if everything you heard today, everything you learned, it sounds like something you're interested in, something you want to get serious about, we're going to extend a special invitation to you at the end of this workshop. All right? Time is precious. Life is short. Let's get started. Folks, the biggest difference I have found between doodlers and dabblers, amateur musicians and those who are dedicated to turning pro, is that those who are bound to become pro are not afraid to face the facts, are not afraid to face the pain, are not afraid to acknowledge reality as it really is which separates them from these doodling, dabbling amateurs who are just full of whims and wishes and they just imagine the way they would like things to be. So if you are indeed someone who is serious and not just curious, let us first start with facing the brutal facts of being a musician today. The brutal fact we have to face, first of all, is that music doesn't sell. I know it still sells here and there, but to really grasp the severity of the situation, let's put it in a brutally simple and dramatic way. Music doesn't sell. Let that be our starting point. Now, what is my evidence for this claim? Folks, take a look at the orange part. The orange part is sales of music. You see, music used to sell. The entire music industry was a record business. 
Records sold, CDs sold. Now, do records or CDs sell today? Yes, somewhat, kind of. Do you see orange in the middle of your screen? Yes, you do, you see. That's the way it used to be. Do you see orange on the right hand of the screen? Nope, you're not seeing orange. Orange used to be there a few decades ago, but today it is replaced by the color blue. Boo hoo hoo. What is the color blue? Blue means that we do not have to buy music anymore. We can just stream it. And virtually all of the revenue generated by the music industry that used to be physical sales of CDs and records has been replaced by streaming. Music today is everywhere. It's coming out of the tap like water. Okay, right, you say as a musician, so maybe I can make some money streaming. After all, it says right here in another credible article by another credible publication that streaming has grown to represent 84% of recorded music revenue. 84%. Now, before you get excited thinking that you can make a bunch of money streaming, maybe you can, I'm not saying you can't. Especially if you're Ed Sheeran, I think your chances are pretty damn good. Or maybe you're some genius hell-bent to stay up all night every single night trying to beat the Spotify algorithm. Because folks, if you wanna make money streaming, you will have to generate 800 thousand streams in order to make the equivalent of a $15 an hour job. And not just that, you will have to continue to generate close to a million streams every single month in order to make the equivalent of a $15 an hour job. Musicians receive a royalty of between 0.003 and 0.005 per stream. I mean, these are not even pennies. Is there a word for this? Micro pennies? Now folks, I don't wanna promise you that the path I am about to show you is gonna turn you into a millionaire. We're gonna keep it real right here. I can promise you that it is absolutely possible today to make a living right from your home studio and it'll pay you a hell of a lot more than these 0, 0.000 figures. So how much will it be, Uncle Z? Be patient, that's coming up in a few minutes. Let us finish facing the problems by facing our final problem. Now let me ask you this, unless you are Mick Jagger, who is 137 years old and still going strong, who else wants to tour for the rest of their life? Of course, there might be musicians out there who want to tour. I'm not one of them. Folks, let's face the facts. Tours are tiring. Tours get canceled. And unless you're a teenager, I don't know who enjoys sitting on a stinky tour bus or carrying guitar amplifiers on their back. If you enjoy that sort of thing, beautiful. But I'm trying to speak to those of you who are trying to figure out a different way to monetize your musical superpowers. Let's take as an example a musician like Lewis, who made all of his money from live performances Performances which were suddenly canceled without warning. And this is not so long ago. I'm sure we all wanna forget and erase that from our memories. But folks, if you are serious, you will face reality. And the reality is, the thing we wanna forget about, it might happen again. So you might not wanna put all your eggs in the touring basket, I'm just saying. So Lewis came to us when his income suddenly stopped, when he couldn't perform live anymore. He saw our ads on Instagram. Just like many other musicians, he thought it was a scam, but he was like, hey. I had got nothing to lose. So he followed our path, he signed up for the Academy, and what happened? I'm not gonna tell you. I'm just kidding. I will tell you, but you gotta stick around. That's coming up a little later on. But now, let us get to the possibilities that present themselves to you today. The possibility that I want you to open your eyes to, first and foremost, is stop thinking with yesterday's brain. Stop wishing that things were different. Stop sticking to the things that used to work but no longer work. If you wanna turn pro, you gotta embrace reality exactly as it is and then adjust yourself accordingly to that reality if you wanna monetize your musical skill. So how do you adjust to this reality, folks? Very simple, I want you to repeat after me 1,000 times until it sinks deeply into your mind, body, and soul. Here is what you're gonna repeat a 1,000 times or until it sinks in. Repeat this like a mantra. I am going to stop selling or streaming songs for less than pennies to the people who already get their music for free. Instead, I will consider selling my musical skills 
as a service to places that have the need and ability to pay for my music. And that will be my new mindset and my mantra. But seriously, folks, I want you from this day forward to adopt this mindset. Stop selling or streaming songs for less than pennies to people who already get them for free. Instead, treat your musical skills, not as a product, but as a service to places that have the need and ability to pay for your musical superpowers. Does that make sense? Simply put, I just want you to go where the money is. Think about it. Who holds all the money in the world today? Brands. Who needs to get our attention? Brands. Who used to be the patron of artists hundreds of years ago? Brands, not brands. It used to be kings and churches. They used to be the patrons of arts. But today, who are the patrons of artists? Not kings and churches anymore. Who is it? You got it. Brands. Folks, think about this. Brands need to get on our radar. They need to turn us from bystanders into believers. They need to get not just in our heads, but in our hearts. And what is the perfect way to get somebody's heart? Create feelings. And what are some of the best ways to create feelings? Music. Now, folks, just to give you some perspective about how much brands are spending on marketing and advertising, Dentsu, which is one of the biggest ad agencies in the world, a client of mine, which I had the pleasure to work with on many different campaigns, projects that in 2024, global advertising spend is expected to grow by 4.6%, growing, not shrinking, to 752.8 billion dollars. Can you even wrap your head around this number? And not just that, but connected TV ad spend. TV ad spend. Some people thought TV was dead. Nope. Not only is it not dead, but then to projects in 2024 at 30.8% increase in ad spend. Now, folks, are you starting to see, whereas back in the day, the churches and the kings had all the money and they would give it some of it to the patrons, to the artists, to the musicians to try to move hearts and minds today. Who has the money? It's the brands. Who holds the money? Who's handing out the money? It's the brands. So, folks, let us sum up. Brands have the need and ability to pay others to create content, campaigns and commercials that stick in the hearts of and minds of consumers. The work of the brand is not actually to create stuff. It's to create stories, mythology, that gets you to turn from a bystander into a believer. Fortunately or unfortunately, that's what it's about. In the end, they need you to buy their stuff. But folks, I want you to wrap your mind around the fact that it is not Red Bull's job to manufacture cans filled with caffeinated water. The actual mission and job of Red Bull is to manufacture the myth and the story that's going to give you feelings and emotions that's going to stick in your mind and heart so next time you're in the grocery store, you're going to choose the Red Bull can over the no-name can. Does that make sense? That is the role of the brand, to create feelings and emotions inside of you. And music plays such a huge part. So now, folks, if brands are not the ones who make the magic happen because they're too busy sitting in their skyscrapers over their Excel spreadsheets, counting all the money they're making, who is making the magic happen? The short answer, it is we. We, the freelance creators, commissioned by brands to create commercials, campaigns, and content that keep the brands relevant and on our radar. So what is the process and the path for how music is made for these brand campaigns, commercials, and content? Folks, as you can appreciate, this is obviously a longer lesson, but I'm gonna condense this right now so you can have it in a nutshell. Folks, it all starts with a brand sitting in their skyscraper in their fancy offices, but because they're too busy sitting over their Excel spreadsheets counting how much money they're making, what they do is they hire an ad agency to do all of their creative thinking for them. And they're gonna go, how can we sell more units of Coke? How can we position Red Bull to be the sexiest energy drink that you can buy? And so they come up with a bunch of ideas, with a bunch of stuff, they sit over a whiteboard, right? There's different teams, 
coming up with ideas, battling, and then they present the best ideas to the brand. The brand selects the idea and they're like, oh, we love this. Red Bull gives you wings. Yes, that is the slogan. Let us do all of our campaigns, commercials, and content around this particular slogan. They won the brand business. But now, who's going to shoot all of these campaigns, commercials, and content? It's not the hipsters at the ad agency. They're going to select their favorite film production company in order to actually bring these ideas to life. And then the film production company is going to reach out to some freelance film director and say, who would be best to bring this idea to life? And so a bunch of film directors compete for the brief. They all write treatments. They all say, well, the way I would present it is this, the way I would present it is that. And then the ad agency ends up picking the film director that they want to shoot this campaign commercial or content. Once this piece of content is shot, the ad agency once again selects an editing company that is going to now edit whatever they shot. So there might be like three editing companies that they consider, but they ultimately choose one. And while the editing is happening, now we get to the music, the ad agency. Once again, these beautiful creative people at the ad agency are going to say, hmm, which music production company do we want to work with on this particular campaign, commercial, or piece of content? And so as it usually is in the world, the musicians are at the bottom of this pyramid. But the undisputable reality that you might not be aware of that I want you to take away from this is that there are music companies in the world that exist solely for the purpose of creating original songs, scores, and sounds for some of the world's biggest brands, their campaigns, commercials, and content. But now, is it the music company that actually comes up with this music? No, it is not. Who comes up with the music? Well, folks, it is you. You, the freelance musician, getting paid to sit in your home studio to create songs, scores, and sounds for this music production company that you have built a relationship with that commissions you to create magic so they can pass your music on to the ad agency so that the ad agency can pass it on to the brand so that the brand can go, wow, I'm getting goosebumps. Let's put this on air right away so we can have millions of people get goosebumps and buy our stuff. Now, how do I know this? Because it is my work as a music producer to commission countless musicians around the world. And I have done it over a thousand times on three different continents. So I think I know something about this game. So here's a few facts to sum up what we just learned. Fact number one, countless music production companies exist all over the world whose sole purpose it is to create original music for big brands, their campaigns, commercials, and content. But how do they create this music? Fact number two, countless musicians just like you sitting in their home studios around the world are commissioned by these music houses to create original songs, scores, and sounds right from their home studio. You don't even have to wear pants. Most musicians don't know about this path and we've introduced countless musicians to this hidden path and not just introduce them, but help them to break into the business and get their first paying project. You might be sitting there and saying, okay, Uncle Z, this is all beautiful, but realistically, how much do these musicians make? How much can I expect to make in the business? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about the money. First off, I want you to hear a few words from these three musicians who had no idea about this path before they came to us. Finally, after a couple weeks, he said, hey, I have good news for you. Um, the team said it was a tough decision, but they chose your track. And, I, you know, I, wow. I called my wife and we, you know, we got our bottle of wine. And I mean, that email was like the, the money shot. I was like, yeah. I can do this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm part of, I'm part of this world now. That was so validating to get to say like, Hey, they like it. Um, you're going to get, you're going to get the the big payday and, uh, yeah. you're going to, um, your, 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 you know, your music is going to be playing on terrestrial TV in, in Paris. I was like pretty That's stoked amazing. about that. <laughs> it's the amount of money, the, the, the pay between the rights and the composer fee for this one is almost enough for me to pay the rent for my apartment for an entire year these 10 seconds whatever it was nearly as much as i'd made in a whole of last year of teaching producer and songwriter and composer it's just even crazy to say that because just a year or two ago i had a full-time job working for a retailer and doing music on the side and now i'm a full-time composer full-time producer it's just lovely these are the kind of conversations that we're having 
So one of the things that musicians tell me about my business that they say surprised them when they first learned about this is that we pay a demo fee every time we ask a musician to create a piece of music. That doesn't happen with music libraries. That doesn't happen with sync. Those things are like a lottery. Submit your music and maybe one of these times it will get picked. Folks, the key difference here is this. That music libraries and sync is really about a song for a particular cue. It's really not about you. Whereas in our business, it's about you as a craftsperson, you as a musical problem solver that people will be willing to pay money to solve their musical problem. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not about the track, it's about you. It's not about the song, it's about the source that's gonna help them to solve the musical problem. It's like the difference between buying a suit at H&M, think music library, or Gucci, think maybe licensing, but you're still buying something existing off a rack. And the difference of going to a custom tailor who will take measurements, who will size you up, who will sit there picking the cloth and the color, and then commission you to actually write a custom piece that fits the campaign commercial or content like a glove. So every time a music house or a music producer like me will reach out to you and ask you for a demo, we will pay you a demo fee. And the demo fee will be anywhere from 150 bucks on the low end to $350 and above on the high end. Most of the time it's somewhere around $250 and it should take you no longer than two and a half hours to create, let's say a 30 second piece of music. So if you do the calculation in your head, you can already see that's a hell of a lot more than 15 bucks an hour that you can expect to get from 800,000 streams. Here I'm asking you to sit in the studio for two and a half hours, giving you 250 bucks on average, which means you're making about $100 an hour to sit in the studio, twiddle knobs, press keys, strum strings, create beautiful music, and get handsomely paid for it. But that's not where it ends, folks. That's just the demo fee. Now, I'm gonna take a few demos from a few freelance musicians, and I'm gonna present the ones that I like best to the ad agency. The ad agency is then gonna listen to those demos and say, here are the three we like best, and they're gonna show them to the brand, to their client. Now, they're gonna go back and forth, they're gonna argue, but eventually, the the brand and the agency are gonna agree on the one track that's gonna make the campaign, that's gonna go on TV, go on radio, go on cinema, go on social feeds. That's gonna be the select. And whichever freelance composer gets the select, they will get a final fee. They will get paid for the song that was chosen to go on this campaign commercial or a piece of content. And what can you expect as a final fee? Folks, it all depends on the brand, on the project, on the usage, on where it's gonna play, every project budget will differ. And that's for you to figure out with the music producer that you'll be working with. But on average, we see final fees going anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000 and way beyond. I didn't wanna put any crazy figures here, even though I've seen crazy final fees being paid to musicians. I wanna give you the average number so we approach the situation realistically. Let me give you an example. One of my former students, who is now the chef of my musical kitchen at Tommy Z & Co, recently sent me this message saying, Uncle Z, I just got a brief and I just wonder what the hell is the budget if the win fee for the freelance composer is $6,600. Crazy. And I said, well, maestro, usually the music house will give anywhere from 20 to 30% of their entire music budget to the final fee for the composer who got the final. So I'm guessing in this particular scenario, the total budget of the music was probably 25 grand, but just keep in mind, most of that budget will go to the music house. Now folks, one of the final ways that musicians make money in our business is through licensing, which you are probably already familiar with, or what we call pulls. Meaning, I might come to you one day and I might say, hey, I have this job, it's a really short deadline, we have a really small budget, we don't have time or money to develop new demos from scratch, so I'm wondering if you have something in your archives along the lines of this creative brief or this musical direction. 
And if you do, please send it to me. And if we happen to line it up with the edit and something sticks, I'm gonna give you anywhere from a thousand to I've seen 150 grand being paid to a virtually unknown band because they had something on their hard drive that fit the campaign like a glove. The brand loved it, the agency loved it, everybody loved it, and they wanted to license it for three years. 150 grand is the most I've seen for an unknown band. But most of the time, when I get requests, from brands or from agencies for a quick thing, for a social media campaign or something like this, which they don't have time to develop original music for. Usually it's somewhere between a thousand to I would say 5,000 bucks, which is not bad for a piece of music that is just sitting there on your hard drive collecting dust. Now folks, a lot of musicians ask me about publishing. This is a way longer topic that we actually cover in more detail in our masterclass, but know this, sometimes you get royalties, sometimes you do not get royalties. It really depends where the campaign that you're making music for is happening in the world. Some places like Western Europe, Germany, Netherlands, Royalties may happen and they may even be great. In some places like America or Asia, in America, for instance, the brand wants to buy out the rights to the music, which means there will be no royalties. They actually want to collect all the royalties. These greedy bastards. And in places like Asia, it seems like they don't really take the time to track which music is playing on which channel, which means they're not really very good about being able to calculate which piece of content or which piece of music should make how much. That's the story anyway. So folks, I wouldn't count on royalties. It's a nice to have, and you should definitely figure out how to put yourself in a spot so you can receive royalties if there are royalties to be received. But we talk about this at length in our masterclass. This is way too long of a subject to discuss right here. So now let's make the money practical. I call this the math of the path. And I'm, I love visualizing scenarios because they make things real for me. So let us say that you have gone out there and you have created 30 connections with music producers just like me at 30 different music production companies. And let us say that you guys have good vibes, you guys have a great connection, you had a chat, and now each of these connections is sending you one project a month. So you're doing 30 demos a month, all right? According to the pros in our business, the average final rate, meaning like the average percentage of times that you will actually get a final out of every 10 demos that you do is 10%, meaning that for every 10 demos that you do, you're gonna get one final. And I'm not talking about beginning or amateur musicians, I'm talking about the pros in the business. This is the kind of batting average that they have, 10%. So let's assume you get asked to do 30 demos in a month and you win three finals. Let us assume that the average final nets you $2,000. So you're gonna be invoicing for 27 demo fees, let's say at $250 which will net you $6,750. Now you might ask, why only 27? I thought I demoed 30 times. Yes, but don't forget you got three finals. Every time you get a final, you do not get paid for that demo fee. Why? Because that demo went final, so you get the final fee. I prefer the final fee over a demo fee. But let us say you got three finals, which according to our example, will net you $2,000 per final, times three, $6,000, adding that up, you're talking about $12,750 per month. Now I want you to understand that this is not gonna happen in your first few months, not even in your first year, because it's gonna take time for you to develop relationships with 30 music producers around the world. But if you have the talent, if you have the tenacity, folks, it's not gonna take you that long to develop these relationships and to be on your way to generating a lot of demos, some of which will go final. So you can see, I'm not talking about millionaire math over here, but I'm certainly talking about the kind of income that can allow you to do full-time music making right from your home studio. And we have students who have quit day jobs to do this full-time to prove it. But let us look at a more conservative example. Let us say you have 30 connections with music producers. So now you're doing 10 demos this month and according to our 10% batting average, you just won yourself one final, the average final fee, again, 2,000 bucks. We're gonna invoice for nine demo fees, nine times 250 is $2,250, and we're gonna invoice for one final fee, which is $2,000, adding it all up, it's $4,250 per month, 
And here, my friends, you're working probably no more than two hours a day in your studio. An average demo should take you no more than two and a half hours to make. So we're really talking about 25 hours of work or so in the studio and actually getting paid for it. And I know that most of you would gladly spend the rest of your precious life in the studio, even if you weren't getting paid for it. But here, we're actually talking about getting paid for your craft. Now, I wanna make this really clear. This path is not for everyone. I know a lot of you might be getting excited, and some of you rightly so. Some of you watching this belong in our business. But some of you might get excited, and you might be like, oh, this is the way I'm gonna make money. I just wanna caution you, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. This is not for those who are just curious. Curious. This is for those who are serious. You need to be committed. You need to have patience. You need to have persistence. You need to exude an aura of professional vibes, of professional commitment to your music career. This is not an overnight success kind of thing. This path requires serious dedication and serious work. So if this slide doesn't scare you and you're not afraid to ride this rodeo, let me tell those of you who are serious how to break into this game. Now folks, I'm gonna make this real simple. The name of this game is you, the freelance musician on the left, making a connection that will result in trust, in good vibes, in good musical fruit, and in an ongoing long time relationship with music producers at music houses all over the world. What is it that you wanna do? You wanna reach out to music producers like me and my peers at all the different music production companies in the world, and there are countless music production companies in the world. You wanna introduce yourself in the right way, and here's where a lot of you make mistakes, and I'm gonna talk about them in a second. You wanna develop a good connection. They have to like you. When they like you, they might take the next step and say, okay, good vibes between us. Let me see how you will do on this demo. And then they will decide, can I trust this person? Are they reliable? Do they deliver great music? This is as simple as it gets, but even though it is simple, it is not easy. But for those of you who have the talent, not just in making music, but developing interpersonal connections, being on time, checking your email, being a pro, not just being a doodler and dabbler, but a dedicated craftsperson who's willing to work hard, your only game your only focus should be to make friends with music producers at music production companies. Why with music producers at music production companies and not the ad agencies, not the brands? You don't make friends with ad agencies because you're not a music house. You shouldn't even bother emailing brands because they're not gonna deal with individual freelance musicians. But music producers at music production companies like mine, we are always on a lookout for someone who has talent, tenacity, and someone who can deliver goosebumps to our audience. We will gladly pay you for the goosebumps. So folks, this is as simple as it gets. You making friends with music producers at music houses. Now, how do you do this? Many of you email me and you're like, well, now that I found out about this world, how do you even find these music houses? Because yes, there are a lot of them, but I don't even know how to find them. And folks, it is true, our industry is a hidden path. You don't hear a lot about these music production companies. They don't advertise.